Oh, whoa. It is no longer Saturday, June 17th. We are not at Webster Hall in New York. But on that date and that place, Mike Gordon played a show. It's on YouTube, thanks to Larry Rules. He hooked us up for that. Thank you for shout out. Boom. Larry, you're the man. I'll include a link down there in the description. But first, before you go checking that out, you gotta hear what he played. It's like my 11th try doing this. So if you're like, what's going on with him? I don't know what's going on. Can't even blame Gummies this time. So he's, you know, when the show started out, I'll probably, I'll like bang through the set list. I'll definitely include it in the description below. And as you see, there's no whiteboard. Can't get a whiteboard. Mike Gordon doesn't get a whiteboard, man. I love Mike, but he's not getting a whiteboard to keep the Sharpie fresh. We got some shows coming soon. So we got Connected and Haywire. That's how the show starts. And then it really gets going. I don't know, Maul, one of the songs they're more comfortable with. Yeah, I also wanted to comment on uh, Scott and Mike. You know, it was three, four, five years ago. I was like, wow, you know, these guys have been together a while now. You can tell, you know, they really groove, especially in these live shows. I've gotten out. I've seen Mike once, believe it or not. And, um, yeah, now for just five years later or so, uh, just even more so. It's kind of amazing that Mike has, like, what, it's just two different bands, man. What an artist this guy is. You know, he's got this thing going on with Trey and Fishman and Paige. Although we, ooh, we've lost Robert Walder. Robert Walder in the sport coat, not on stage. Replaced with uh, Rachel Eckroth, her name. She's getting in on the vocals on one song. Really good, too. Maybe a little better than I expected, you know, um... I don't know why I didn't expect her to be that great. You know, I just thought maybe like, maybe she looked too young or something. I just didn't, I don't know. But she was much better than I expected. You know, I was expecting maybe a little something generic there. Brings a little different aspect. Maybe not quite as jazzy. Maybe more fitting for a rock band than uh, Robert was. Uh, Rachel is on keys. That is. <laughs> and then, um, so yeah, I got that Scott and Mike. Right? So we got all in my way. They played Wave of Hope. They busted out Wave of Hope in the second set. And I think it's official. You know, I know everybody likes to tease Trey about his vocals, even go beyond teasing at some points. Some point, just, you know, verbally abuse the guy about his vocals. Some of you do. Not me. Every now and then I'll get a little, you know, I don't really, I don't approve of some gumbo action every now and then, how he's singing. But uh, Wave of Hope, man, Mike just nails it much, much better. You know, overall, the song, it's still Wave of Hope, still kind of has that same sound. And uh, But I just prefer Mike doing the lead vocals on this. Anyhow, maybe somehow, some way, even though it's a Trey song, I don't think we're going to convince Trey to step aside. Give the old step aside, Butch. I don't think so. And then uh, for the encore, we got a Karini in the encore. It's a nice mix of everything, though. You know, we got a Trey cover. Then we got a song that Fish covers with You Sexy Thing. That song never sets. That was one of my, that was a very Talking Heads feel to it. That's a Mike song off of his new album. And if you didn't know, Mike just had a new album come out about a month ago. The, uh, what's it called again? Flying, uh, Flying Games. Yeah, he's playing games all right. There's pure energy at the end of the, right after that wave of hope. It was another one. I feel like, you know, Maul, Circling, Say Something. Those were all in the first set. And then Sung Never Sets. I think that's right. Sung or Sun. S-U-G-H-N. Sounds to me like Mike is saying sung. Like he sung a song. The song never sets. Should probably take a closer look at the lyrics. Maybe get some uh, maybe get some insight. Find out what he's singing about. What is Mike Gordon singing about? And then I got to say, I'm such an idiot with his daughter. Like years ago at Blossom, I saw Mike. You know, Mike likes to take a little ride around on the golf cart. Give you a little flyby in the lot. Well, his daughter was on the golf cart with him. Well, in my mind, she's still that same age. I don't know. I'm an idiot, right? You know, she was like a little girl back then. Like, I don't know, five, six, seven years old or something. So when I saw Tessa Gordon on League Vocals uh, for the encore, I didn't, I thought maybe it'd be like just kind of a joke, like a funny little family moment. Well, she actually has aged since then. I don't know exactly how old she is. Somewhere maybe in the teen years, she dresses like a teenager, kind of like hip and cool. Um, I don't know, 13 to 17 or something. Um, looked very comfortable on stage. Uh, it sounded like some adult men shouting out her name. That was a little like, hey man, she's like, she's not young enough that where she needs like encouragement. I mean, Mike's bringing her out there on stage. Obviously, he knows she can handle it. And she's not old enough for it to be like, okay, I don't know, you know. So it's just a little weird, you know. Just calm down on the shouting her name out. She, she seems like a pro somehow. I guess it just runs in the family. And uh, they did Who Knows Who and Funny Thing About Love. And, yeah, man, she's really good. I was kind of shocked. Brought out some uh, brass for that. And then uh, they went on to do Karini. And uh, so I don't know if she's looking for a career in music or not. Uh, 
she certainly seems to be able to uh, perform in front of people. You know, I don't know how many people were there, but I could see a young kid being overwhelmed by all that. But I don't know. Maybe with old Mike there, Mike seemed very proud, very proud Papa, day before Father's Day. So that was really cool. And um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm just a sexist because I didn't expect much from the uh, keyboard player. Although I really love Robert Walter, you know seen that guy play in multiple bands. I just think he's awesome. So maybe I was just like, she's not going to be as good as Robert, which, you know, I don't know what that means as good as when you're talking about a keyboard player in a rock band, but she definitely fit the band singing worked on circling. And then, uh, yeah, she just kind of the talking head song kind of sounding song. She worked in nicely on that. And then, uh, Tessa, she actually ages. She's not going to be five years old her whole life. Who knew? And she can really sing. Runs in the family. Mike, he can sing too. Better than Trey at this point. Boom. We'll leave you with that. Sorry, Trey. Still love you. Even though you look like a geezer at Gizzard.